Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if y'all can hear me good. Y'all excuse the excuse the excuse the scar the night. My hair is not dead and uh yeah. I ain't trying to show up my little grades right now, so I put my little scarf on. I feel a little better with my scarf on covering my head because it ain't looking right like I want. It's not done. So excuse the scarf tonight. My hair is not done. Uh, can't come on here any kind of old way, looking any old kind of way, but that's neither here nor there. But Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come on tonight. Father God, we come before your throne room, your throne room, your courtroom of heaven on tonight. Father God, just to come on and encourage your people on tonight. Father God, we never know what somebody's going through or need of or have need of. So I'm just coming on here tonight to encourage your people, Father God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, clothing our right mind, starting us on our way with the use and activity of our limbs. We come with sincere, repentant hearts, Father God. We repent for every sin that we may have committed in your eyesight that was not pleasing unto you. Father God, sins the omission, commission, trans, uh, Mm. The devil is a liar, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we just ask for forgiveness on tonight. Father God, hallelujah. We just thank you for being God and being God all by yourself, Father God. Again, we just come in to repent for the sins we have already, that we have committed, Father God. Whether it be in word, deed, thought, or action, Father God. Whether it be known or unknown, seen or unseen, Father God. We just ask for your forgiveness and we thank you for being a loving and forgiving, Father. We thank you for the unconditional love that you shower us with, Father. God. Again, I pray that somebody gets something out of this encouraging word tonight. Just coming on quickly to encourage, Father God, uplift and build your kingdom, Father God. And I declare and decree that it is so and it's already done. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Um, just had to get my prayer out. Words was getting a little tongue-tied. So I'm just, normally I, um, We'll have it all typed up on paper, but tonight I'm just flowing sweaty, it's hot and tired, but I gotta press, I gotta press forward, I gotta press in, I gotta press on, so I gotta be obedient, tired of walking in disobedience, so I don't wanna get whooped up on no more by my father, so I had to come over here and, you know, come to encourage, um, so, um, the first scripture, I, I, the one guy gave me this morning, was um the scripture Matthew nine thirty seven to thirty eight but I'ma start at thirty six. Um again this is just to come on and encourage you all. I don't know what you might be going through, what you might be facing, what you you know if your back is you feeling like your back is up against the wall. I'm just coming to encourage you and give what thus saith the Lord uh it's God to always when I open up my mouth to fill it, to decrease me and increase the Holy Ghost. So I'm, I'm speaking what the Holy Ghost say, not what Edna say, not what Edna want to say, not from this flesh. Mm -mm. So anyway, Matthews nine thirty six to 38 reads as this. When he saw the crowds, and I'm reading the Amplified Version, when he saw... When he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion and pity for them. Because they were dispirited and distressed like sheep without a shepherd. And he talking about we, we're the sheep, basically, and, and our pastors are our shepherds. You know, God gives the shepherd a flock to watch over and to take care of and, and you know, to do what he needs to do. So, um, who glory to God. He said, he said, when he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion and pity for them because they were dispirited and distressed like sheep without a shepherd. If you don't have a pastor, if you don't have, if you're not sitting under uh, a pastor, I don't know, you might have a bishop, apostle, I don't know. Man, I don't know, if you're not sitting, if you're not being covered, then you're you're going to be dispirited. You're going to be distressed. 
You're going to be like sheep running around and, and don't have a shepherd to, to cover you. Don't have a shepherd to teach you and to show you the way to go. So, you know, that's, that's what, it, that's what it's basically saying. If you don't have a shepherd, if you're not in church, hey, Audrey, how you doing? If you don't have a shepherd, if you're not in a church, if you're not sitting under your, your, your bishop, your first lady, your pastor, your first lady or the pastor, if you just, you need to be in church. You need to be in church sitting under a pastor. You need to be covered with the, the, with the times that's going on today, how we live in today, the last and evil days. You need to be covered. You need to be shepherd. You need to have a pastor. You need to have a covering. And that's why he said he was moved with compassion and pity because they didn't have, they were like sheep running around without a shepherd. Today we're, we're sheep running out, running around without a shepherd. We all not in church. We all just, you know, some people got the, oh, I can, I can praise them at home. I can worship them at home. You sure can. But he also say it's good for us to go in the house and fellowship with one another, fellowship one to another, you know, just sitting in the house, you just by yourself. And yeah, maybe the Holy Ghost can move, but you still need to be in the house house of the Lord and you to get taught, you know, to be taught to fellowship with your sisters and brothers, to be encouraged by your sisters and brothers, encourage one another, pray for and with each other. That's why he said he had compassion and pity. He was pitying them. And we still being pity because we still hard headed. We still not listening. So anyway, I'm going to move on to the next verse, which is 37. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is indeed plentiful, but the workers are few. Did you hear that? Let me read it for you one more time for those in the back in case you didn't hear me. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is indeed plentiful. Now, this is Jesus talking. The harvest is indeed plentiful, but the workers are few. Mm. <laughs> Whoo, come on, Holy Ghost. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. There's not enough workers out there in the harvest. It's not a work, there's not enough workers out here spreading the gospel of the good news, sharing the word of God, loving each other, loving on each other, showing love, displaying love. What God is what? He's all about love. God loves his children. God loves family. That's why he created us. He created, he created us to worship. The song says, you, you created me to worship daily. He said, you did not create me to worry. You did not create me to fear, but you created me to worship you daily. So I'm going to leave it all right here. All your concerns, all your problems, all your cares, all your issues and circumstances that you may be going through. Leave it all right at the feet of Jesus. Give it all to Jesus. Give it all over to God and let him work it out because you can't do it. You can't do it by yourself, boo. You can't do it in your own strength. Mm -mm, not going to work. Not going to work for you. Again, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. We need more workers out here. We need more workers out in the in the communities, in the neighborhoods, on the blocks, sharing the word of God, teaching and, and, and giving the word of God, encouraging people in the Lord, giving people some hope, letting people know that God loves you and He cares for you. He says it in His Word. He said, He said, Cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. That means everything that's worrying you, everything that's shaking you up, everything that's making you feel like, oh my back is up against the wall. I don't know which way to turn. I don't know who to trust. He said, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. Give it over to God. Let God do it. He said, I'll fight your battles. If you would just hold your peace, I'll fight your battles. Give it over to God. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord. It don't belong to you. Give it to God. Let go and let God. Yeah, it's easy said than done. I know it's easy said than done. I've been there, done that, boo. You, you ain't telling me nothing. I'm a witness. I've been there, done that. Hard-headed, disobedient, stiff neck, doing what I want to do in my own strength, thinking I'm getting something done. I ain't getting nothing done. Because why? I didn't put God first. 
I didn't put God as the head of my life in the beginning. And let me tell you something. This walk ain't for, for everybody to join you. Everybody can't go where God is taking you. And I'm, I'm trying to go some, I was trying to go somewhere else, but I'm going where the Holy Ghost is telling me to go. Everybody cannot walk this walk with you. This is not a walk that you can bring your friends on. You can bring your kids on. This walk is for yourself. This is, this sometimes is a lonely walk, baby. Don't expect no company. Only company you won't get is Jesus and the Holy Ghost. You're not going to get no, no, you're not going to get your peoples. You're not going to get your bestie. Your bestie can't walk with you. You got to walk alone. When you walking with Jesus, when you serving God, you got to walk alone. You can't walk this thing with everybody. Let me tell you something. I didn't understand it in the beginning either. When I gave my life over to God, seriously gave my life over to God, it was like everybody disappeared. Pew, 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 pew. Where'd they go? What did I do? Why are they turning back on me? What, what is it, God? Is something wrong with me? He said, no. They can't go with you. Everybody can't go with you. I made them leave. I separated you from them. They couldn't go with you. They can't go where I'm taking you. And then it was like, okay, okay, I got it. Then that's when that's when the peace came over. Cause I'm just like, what happened? What what the? I don't got cooties and nothing. What happened? Why everybody gone? Why everybody walk away? And that's a hurtful feeling when you feel like everybody walked away from you when you don't understand what go, what's going on in the beginning. When you don't understand what God is doing in your life, you just thinking the first thing you're going to go was with your mind, your cardinal mind. You're going to think with your mind and you can't see it from what, from God's perspective. You can't see it through God's eyes because you're still in your, in your mind. You're still in your cardinal mind. You're still in your flesh. You got to put this under subjection every day, daily, on a daily basis. You got to put this thing under subjection because the flesh will want what it want and it's going to do to get what it want. It's going to do anything to get what it want. I'm telling you that right now. You got to put this under subjection. The things you used to do when you want to serve God, when you want to walk with God, when you want to be in a relationship with God, when you want to be in the presence of God, you, you, can't, you can't live by this. You can't live by this. You got to live by God's word and his commandments. And that's why he said this, that he said that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. People don't want to do the work, but they want the titles. They want the, the gifts and the talents and the accolades that go along with it, but they don't want to do the work. They don't want what they say in the army or, or the services, the grunt work. They don't want to do the grunt work. They just want think everything is supposed to be handed over to them, handed to them, you know, like a, like like a silver, like your, you know, how you used to say you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. They want everything to come to them, but they don't want to do anything for for what God has. God has gifts and talent. He has a lot for us, but we don't want to do the work. We just want you to give. We just want him to give us the gifts, and we go on about our business. La di da di da. We don't gotta do. No, you got this work to do. There's plenty of work to do with all that's going around. Just look around. I know y'all see it. I'm going to say it every time. I know y'all see what's going on. I know y'all know we living in the last of evil days. I know y'all can see the signs. Coronavirus. COVID-19, whatever. Uh, Monkeypox now. Come on. I know y'all know what time it is. Good God of my children disappearing left and right. Sex trafficking going on. All this craziness going. Y'all know what time it is. Last and evil days. Simple as that. Satan running wild. Hey, Deidre. Satan running wild. Hey, Redbone Jones. I see you. Satan running wild. He running buck wild. Boy, he like, whoop, I better grab everything and everybody I can. Time winding up. He coming and he know what time it is. So I better grab everybody I can. I got better do what I can to get him to, to come with me. You know, playing this worldly music with all this explicit language in it and the women is just a... How they call it, y'all, back in the day, gyrating and, and, and all that and shaking this and twerking that. Come on, y'all. And, and you, sometimes you can't even tell, uh, uh, if a woman is a woman or if a dude is a dude. You can't even tell what people are no more. You cloning this, you doing that. Come on. It, it's too much going on. Too much going on. That's why you got to get right and get right with God. You got to get right and get right now. You got to get to know him while you can. You better seek him while he still may be found. I'm telling you, 
I'm trying to get to this last verse because then I'm going from here to um, John 15 and go talk about that. I'm just coming to encourage y'all and give y'all some word and give you something to meditate on, give you something to, to focus on, give you something to digest, to ponder on, you know what I mean, to marinate, you know what I mean, let it marinate in your system because the only thing I come to do is encourage and plant the seed. That's all I'm supposed to do, plant the seed, somebody else will come by and we'll, God will bring somebody else to water it and he'll get an increase. I'm only doing what I'm supposed to do, and that's that. I ain't doing no more and no less. I'm doing what I'm what I'm instructed to do. So I just I'm hoping it's encouraging somebody. I'm hoping somebody getting something out of this. Who Jesus, come on here. Okay, let me get to this third verse so I can go to the next one. Woo! So pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest so he's saying pray ask god to send some workers out here lord send some more workers we need plenty of work we need tons of workers everywhere in every city in every state in every country every neighborhood every county every uh, um community we need workers we need workers everywhere Every day, somebody come uh, past your cross. God sent somebody past your, I mean, cross your path. You witness to them. You, you, you give them a little encouragement. You let them know how much God loves them because he does love you. You are his. You are his children. We are his children. He loves us and he wants what's best for us. Anything that's coming to you negative, uh, um, bad or whatever, that is not of God. He is not of no confusion. He is not, he does not bless no mess. And it's not of God. I'm going to tell you that now. God will test you, but Satan will tempt you. Learned that recently as long as I've been going to church. Sometimes you, you, some things you understand and some things get past you when you're not really paying attention. And I do mean really paying attention. So anyway, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. The ones that really want to work. The ones that really want to go out here and, 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 you know, encourage the ones that are lost. The ones that are feeling depressed. The ones that are going through mental issues the ones that you know having a hard time out here the ones that feel unloved and rejected and abandoned because there's a lot of people out here that feel that way been there done that myself yes i have i'm i'm, I'm just gonna keep it 100 with you been there done it myself Okay, there's a lot of people out here who 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 contemplating suicide. I mean, these spirits is running rampant. Man, let's just call it what it is. These demons is running rampant in people. That's why it says that we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities. See, because I'm gonna have to whip that out real quick. All right, I'm I'm done with Matthew. I'm about to go to to my book Ephesians. I'm about to go to Ephesians because I I really need y'all to get that. Six, no, not that. Yeah, that's it. I thought I went to the wrong book. All right, so let me go to the right. Let me go to where I want to go to. I'm going to put this in King James because I just like the way that King James put it. Oh, uh, let me see. 13, I think. No, it's 12. Ephesians 6 and 12. Reasons this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's us. Your, your sister, your brother, your cousin, family member, friend, whoever, bestie, whoever. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So if they're coming at you and they and they doing stuff that you have no clue why they doing, backstabbing you. They ain't even backstabbing you no more. They just stab you right in your face. They ain't even doing it behind your back no more. They they talking about you right in your face. I mean, just doing all kinds of stuff, all manner of evil and wicked stuff. That's the time we living in now. So when they do that, when people coming up against you, it's not the person. It's the demon that's possessing that person, okay? I'm just going to keep it real with you. It ain't no sugarcoating. Straight up, no chaser. You can't be sugarcoating it. You can't be tiptoeing it around. You can't do that no more, You you got, but you got to do it in love. You got to let people know what's going on, what, what time it is. But you got to do it in love and with love. You, and you better not, and you shouldn't be doing that. And you know you run. No, you, you can't do it that way because it, it wasn't done to us like that. It wasn't done to me like that. So I can't be looking my nose down at somebody and you heathen and you sinner. No, I can't talk to nobody like that. That's not going to get me nowhere with the person that I'm trying to plant the seed so that the, it could be watered by. 
about somebody else so that God get an increase so that they can seek God for salvation and give their life over to God. You can't be shaking your finger and, and pointing your finger and making somebody feel lower than they already feel. That's not going to help them. It's not going to help them come to the kingdom of God. It's just not. People didn't do it to you or they didn't do it to me. We can't do it to others. We just can't do that. So it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So stop thinking it's your people that's doing this to you. Look at the people really. Under you. That's why you got to understand the word of God. That's why you have to read it. That's why we have to read it. Let me see. We have to read it. We have to understand it. It said, the word says, study yourself to show yourself approved. That's Timothy 2.15. It says, study yourself to show yourself approved. Not yourself. Study the word of God to show thyself approved. A work would not need to be shamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. That you have to study. We have to study. It's like you go to school for something. Like, I want to go back to school. When I study my schoolwork, same way I got to study the word of God. Like I study my schoolwork. Like I meditate on my schoolwork. I got to do the same thing with God's word. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is what's going on. That's what we're fighting against. We're fighting against spiritual things. We're in a spiritual war. We're in a spiritual battle. Spiritual warfare. You got to put your war clothes on. Got to get dressed. How you get dressed? I'm glad you asked. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on a breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watch it thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, not some saints, not a couple saints, all saints. You see, that's why you got to put on the whole armor. You got to dress, put your, we, we're supposed to put that on all every day. Dressing your arm, put the whole armor of God on every day. And then see, for those that may not understand that, I take it back to the, um, to the Amplified. And I'm going to read verse 13 again. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger and having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth, the personal integrity, moral courage around your waist and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and upright heart and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm foot stability and the readiness produced by the good news. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith, your faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God with all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests at all times on every occasion, every season in the spirit. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and, peti and petition in the city and prayer for all God's people. Did y'all hear that last part in the seating in prayer for all God's people, we are living is a we are living in a praying time. We're living in praying times, y'all. And let me tell you something. I wanted to really lay down, get some rest for start work tomorrow. I had to wash my little hair. Took my hair. Had to wash my hair. Didn't feel like doing that, but I did it. You know how you eat. Do what you got to do. You ready to lay down, rest, and before, until you fall asleep. You know, get ready for work tomorrow. But you got to also press your way. You got to press on, press in. You got to keep on. I said, nope, I got to get on here and do what God told me to do. No time to stop. No time to keep starting something and stopping it and starting it. Nah, mm -mm. that spirit got to go. 
you got to go, Babu. Can't can't do it. Mm mm. So I wasn't even going here with this <laughs> with this preparation with the um putting on the whole armor of God. I wasn't even going there tonight. I was just gonna do these couple of scriptures and then you know, jump off here. But I gotta be obedient. I gotta go where God go. God say go. So you got to put on your whole armor. You got to realize you're not fighting against your flesh and blood, your people, your co-workers, your bestie, your kids. You got spouses. It's not them. It's not them. It's the enemy working through them to distract you, to keep you st- to keep you uh, stagnated. That's the word. There it is. Thank you, Holy Ghost. To keep you stagnated, to keep you not to uh, to make you not move forward in the things of God, but it but He wants you to keep moving in the things of the world, which will jack you up here, jack you up. Okay, so you got the yes, ma'am. You got the you got the obedience. I'm telling y'all, I was walking in disobedience for a mighty long time, and wondering why the kids acting up, why the spouse acting up, why I can't get no peace in no area of my life. Like what is going on? He coming at me at all angles on every hand. I can't catch a break. I don't know what's going on, and and, and it's it's the enemy. And it, it wasn't just the enemy because we can't give, we can't keep giving the devil credit. Sometimes it's us. We are our own and worst enemy. Hear me? Like I said, I've been walking in this, I was walking in disobedience for a mighty long time. And, uh, no more. I, I don't want to get beat on. I don't, I know God chastised the, those that he loved, but I was tired of getting beat because I, I was being disobedient. I'm tired of getting beat. That's how it was. So it is in the spirit. So it is in the natural. When I was coming up, always getting beaten because I was always doing something. I was always being disobedient. So that's what happens. You get beat. You you do something wrong. You get chastised. And boy, oh boy, did I get chastised. I know my mommy ain't on here. But if she was on here, she'd be shaking her head. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I got in trouble a lot. I I got in trouble a lot. When I say a lot, a lot, a lot, I got in trouble. Because I was just disobedient. And that disobedience, that spirit of disobedience attached itself and it attached itself through my teenage years into my adult life. So when you know what you're doing wrong, you got to call it out. You got to take it to the elders in the church and you got to confess your sins one to another. When you can, when you confess your sins one to another, come on here. You, you helping yourself get set free. I don't know about nobody else, but I like to be set free and stay free. I don't want to get entangled in the yoke of bondage no more. I don't want to go back to doing what I was doing. I, the song said it can't go back. I won't go back to the way it used to be. Uh, no, boo. I'm, I'm good. I'm good living for the Lord. I'm good living for the Lord. I do not want to go back out into the world. Cause you know, sometimes we, we do backslide in the sun and the, and the word says that God is married to the backslider. But honey, if you go back out there, you backslide. It's, it's going to be hard to get back in. So there's no need to backslide in the first place. Well, it, it, I can't say there's no need because sometimes it just happens. You know what I mean? Sometimes we backslide. I know I've been there too. Been there, done that. And let me tell you, today, uh-uh, I don't want to go back out there. Mm-mm. It's a fight, but I'd rather fight. Then to go back out there. Hey, Miss Karen. Hey, Elder Karen. God bless you as well, woman of God. I, it's a fight, you know, to live. <sighs> this walk is 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 not easy. It's not a it's not a walk in the park. It's not it's not a piece of cake. But um, it's it's hard. But I'd rather I'd rather do it with God than to go back out there in that world and barely can make it back in. What did the words say? If the words say that the righteous is scarcely gonna make it in, <laughs> I'm not going back out there and be trying to make it back in when I was already in here. Then to go back out in the world? No, I'm not going back out there. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's right. That's why we need to dress in that armor every day. Hallelujah. Put on the armor of God. Listen, I even I 
I even recorded myself. I was reading one of my devotionals and and it was talking about putting on the arm of God and it said a little prayer. I recorded myself saying that little prayer and then putting on those pieces of the armor. Uh, let me don't don't get it twisted. I forgot them. When I get up in the morning, I, I get up to spend time with my father and do my devotions and and then my day get started so so i forget uh, to, to put on my armor because i wasn't used to putting that armor on i ain't gonna lie i'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all i would I, I people always said it and they always talk about putting on the armor of god i've been hearing that for a long time but we hear things but we don't necessarily do it right then and there sometimes our natural mind Though it is, it, it takes a while to catch up with the spirit man, to catch up what God is doing in the spirit man. So you gotta really be on your P's and Q's to have that, have things lined up. I don't know about y'all. I like order and I like stuff lined up. I like to know what I'm going to do. I like to know, um, you know, I like to know what's coming next. I don't, I don't like to just dilly dally walk along, like whatever comes as I go. No, I like to know what's coming next. I like to plan. I like to organize. I like stuff to be in order. So I don't know. They say I have OCD, but I, you can say what you want. I'm just me. I like how I like. I like what I want, like anybody else. Um, yes, man, I sure will. So, I was supposed to be going a whole different direction. So, I'm going to go ahead and jump back to um, John. Because I just jumped off. I I didn't even go to John. I just jumped over to Ephesians 6 and 12. Because I need my sisters and brothers to really go in that Bible. Go to Ephesians 6 and 12. It, It got the little table of contents. If you're not familiar with the Bible, just like I had to learn Get in that table of contents, find out where Ephesians is, and go to that verse 6 and 12. Read it, meditate on it, ponder on it, digest it, marinate it. Just, just get it in your spirit. Get it in your spirit, man. And again, like I like I used to like I like telling my son, yes, man, let the spirit lead you. Like I like telling my son. Oh my God, Jesus, glory to God. When you read the Bible, if you, if you just reading it, say you just getting into the Bible, you know what I'm saying? You're a babe in Christ. That's fine and dandy. When you read that Bible, I didn't understand that. It, I didn't understand that first either, but I kept reading it like it was just a plain old book. No, it's not just a plain old book. You got to really read it and study it like you study for a test. Whatever you go to school for and you taking that test, whatever that field you going in and you going to school for it and you studying for the quiz, the test, the homework, you got to study the word. You got to study the word again. You got to study. I said again. So, you know what I mean? I need to study some more. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. But like I told him, when you read the word of God, your natural mind don't understand. But your spirit man is it's gobbling it up. It's hungry for it. It's been waiting for it for a long, long time. And it's like, oh, they're reading the word. Oh, I'm getting what I was looking for. I'm getting that word. It's filling me up. I'm hungry. I'm, give it to me. Give it to me. You know how, um, and I, I, I don't know why I use this, but that movie, Little Shop of Horror, and that plant was like, feed me, see more. Well, your spirit man be like, feed me, feed me, feed me more. Give me more. Give me more word. Give me more worship. Give me more praise. Give, give, give God praise and worshiping and it's feeding me while you worshiping him and you praising him it's feeding your spirit man it's making your spirit man come alive and waking it up because it's been sleep for a long time yo we've been sleepwalking for a long time and some of us still sleepwalking we still sleepwalking and slumbering and and just not seeing what god wants us to see he wants us to wake up Wake up and stay alert. Wake up and get in the word. We got to wake up, y'all, because it's... it's, mm, Help me, God. Help me, Holy Ghost. It's time to wake up, people of God. It's time to truly wake up. Get in your word. Get in church. And don't just go to any church that ain't teaching you right. That's not preaching the the truth, the word of God, the... 
unadulterated truth of God's word. Don't just go to any church that's going to tell you what you want to hear. If you got itchy ears, it's going to tell you what you want to hear. And then go say, come on up here and sow a seed. See, this is where I was ignorant at. When they was talking about the CC, I could talk about me. I can't talk about y'all that way, but I could talk about myself. But this is where I was ignorant at. When they kept saying, when they, when they was talking about seed all the time, sow a seed, uh, my mind goes straight to money. But the word was talking about this, the sower and the seed. The seed is the word of God. See, I didn't know that because all I kept hearing was sow a seed, sow a seed, sow a seed. And they were talking about money, 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 money. Some preachers, I ain't say all. I said some preachers look at people in the church, look at their congregation as dollar signs. That money is money sitting in them pews, money sitting in them seats. Money is walking up and down and, and, and showing the people where to sit at and giving them they, their water or refreshments. You know, ushers, I'm talking about ushers. But they look at, at people as money, money signs, dollar signs. I'm get paid like this is like yeah it's your job but you don't don't expect to get paid for it. God gonna pay you with more life. He gonna pay you with health. He gonna pay it. He gonna prosper you now. Don't get it twisted. But don't just look at it as just it's just a, a prosperity game. It's just to get money. No, it's to win souls. It's to win the lost souls out here. I'm trying to get back to John. I'm trying to get to this next scripture. Whew, that's why I say Holy Ghost, when I open up this thing, you call a mouth, fill it. Because mm, it got to be the Lord. My God. Okay, I'm going to go on over to, um, mm, I'm going to go to John. Sheesh. I'm telling you. That's why you got to press your way. You got to press on. Mm, you got to press because I, I already I already go to sleep. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I was ready to go to sleep. So, John... 15 now this is this is quite going to be a little long y'all so bear with me let me get to where and i'm in the amplified version just so y'all know uh yeah I, I highlight a lot all right let me highlight some more and then i get right to it i just i just like for people to know best as i can because let me tell you something I, I'm I'm still learning too. I don't I don't got everything down pat. I'm no I'm still learning too. So I'ma highlight that and I'ma read this to y'all. This is John. No, let me go up. I said I was gonna start from four. John fifteen and I'm starting from verse four. And I didn't have that highlight. So it says, remain in me and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you bear fruit producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. So we got to abide in Christ as he abides in us. Again, apart from God, apart from Christ, apart from the Holy Ghost, we can't do nothing we are nothing apart from our father our heavenly father we are nothing and that's the word i'm not making nothing up i didn't write it i didn't write this <laughs> jesus again remain in me and i will remain in you just as no branch can bear fruit by itself a tree branch can't bear fruit by itself. <laughs> it can't. What, what it got to do? What it need to grow fruit on there? Whoo! Lord have mercy. Let me tell y'all something. When I learned about the when I when I learned about the um sower and the seed at Prophetess Becky at my church, she great teacher, excellent teacher. I mean, she breaks the word all the way down, like. The ministers and uh, they breaks the word all the way down for you. I'm I'm just putting it out there. Y'all can tell I love where I go to church. At. I just I just love it. I've been going to church for a long time, but I'm really I'm really starting to get in there. When you really want it, when you really hungry for it, when you really want the word, because when you get the word of God in you, when you truly learn the word of God and study the word of God. You're, you're building your relationship. It's not just the word. You got to pray. 
You got the fast. You got to put all that stuff together. You hear what I'm saying? It's like a recipe. You got to put it all together. And go on, bake whatever you're going to bake. Make whatever you're going to bake. Cook whatever you're going to cook. But it's like a recipe. You got to have all that together. So that you can have that relationship, that walk with God, that relationship that when you in his word and when you and you in his will and his way for your life and you praising and you worship him. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a recipe. Put it all together. Stir it all up together. Put it together and do what you got to do with it. But when you do that, when you truly make up in your mind that you truly, truly going to serve God with all you got, with all that's in you, with all he created in you and he created you to be, when you when you really make up in your mind this is what you're going to do hmm. baby God will begin to speak to you he will begin to open doors for you that no man can shut he will begin to shut doors that no man can open I'll tell him put a padlock on it barricade it whatever doors I need closed barricade them bury them lock them up throw away the key that no man can open Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, when you begin to have that relationship with him, he begin to reveal things to you, show you things, tell you things. Mm. Okay. All right. Verse 5. I am divine. <laughs> Look, y'all. I'll be trying to keep it. I'll be trying to keep a lid on it. Because so when you get to talking about God's word, and you get to talking about God, you, I don't know about nobody else, but I get excited. I get hyped like, you know, I'm about to, like, you know, you about to get something new. You about to buy something you really want. You get all hyped about what you about to get. Well, I get hyped about the word of God, too. I get hyped about that. But, yes, he said, I am divine. I am that I am that I am. I am divine. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, let me calm down. See, I was sleepy earlier, y'all, but I'm talking about my father. I'm talking about the word of God. It get good to you when you really into it, when you really open your heart to God's word and open your heart to God, and you really open up your eyes and your ears so you can hear and see the truth, and, and, and not all the lies that been sold to you all your life, all the lies that been taught to you all your life. When you really get in serious about God, and he's serious, he already serious about you but when we get serious about him he waiting on us we ain't waiting on him god waiting on us come on here somebody holler amen when you when we he's waiting on us he's sitting there like a father with arms wide open waiting for you to come run to him come running back to him mm. okay he said i am divine you are the branches <laughs> The one who remains in me and I am him bears much fruit for otherwise apart from me. I just, I said this earlier. Otherwise apart from me, <laughs> whew, that is cut off from vital union with me. You can do nothing. Mm, 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 mm. Did, did you hear that? He said, <laughs> <sighs> help me lord let me calm down the one who remains in me and i in him bears much fruit for otherwise apart from me that is cut off from vital union with me you can do nothing hmm I know that's right, Jesus. <laughs> Y'all ever try to do something in your own strength and it just all fell to pieces? Nothing worked. It didn't go the way you planned it. It just would not work. I don't care what you did, how you did it, which way you try to do it differently. You, It just didn't work. It just told you. Because apart from Jesus, you can't do nothing. You cannot do things in your own strength and think that it's going to work. I used to always say, <laughs> and now I understand why I was saying that, but I didn't. I just said it then because it, it, it made sense to me and it sounded good. But I used to always say, a dog is running around chasing his tail thinking it's going to catch it. You keep doing the same thing. Over and over again, thinking you're going to get a different result. That's called insanity. That's what it's called. I didn't make it up. Check it out. I Go go look for it for yourself. I didn't make it up. But anywho, I'm going to stick to this. Whoo! 
Yes, sister, Audrey, I'm right with you. Try so many times. And, and you know when it's God. You know when God done opened the door. You know when God done helped you. He done, he done gave you what you was looking for. He done blessed you in that area you was trying to make happen for yourself. You know when he do it because everything fall right in line. It be just like so smooth. It happens. It just happens just like that. You be like, who? Thank you, Jesus. Lord knows I was trying, but it wasn't for me to try. It was for me to be patient and wait on the Lord and be of good courage and of good cheer. Come on here, Holy Ghost. You better bring them scriptures back to my remembrance. Ooh, I, I love when he do that. He bring, the, he bring it back to your remembrance. You be just running your jibs and he be bringing it out. It just be coming out. Who Lord have mercy. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to calm down. Yo, I done, I done, I feel my help coming on. Ooh, Jesus. Thank you. Okay. Calm down, girl. Calm down. Whoo. Let me get a grip. Mm. Okay. Let me find where I was. Okay. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out like a broken off branch. Do you how they broke that down? It said, if anyone does not remain in me. This is Jesus talking, y'all. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out. He thrown out like piece of trash, but he didn't say that. He's thrown out like a broken off branch and withers and dies. And they gather such branches and throw them into the fire. This the word of the Lord. This this is this is Jesus talking. He said that. He ain't playing no games neither. He meant what he said then, and he mean what he said that he mean this is for us now. Yes, this is for us now. So anyhow, whew, if you do not remain in Jesus. If you do not have your anchor in Jesus, who Jesus have mercy, Lord, good God Almighty, y'all, mm, I'm scratching my head. You will be thrown out like a broken off branch. You know how you find some branches be laying on the ground, they be broken half or whatever. He said you're going to be thrown out like a broken off branch and wither and die. And they gather such branches and throw them into the fire. Ain't no more use for them. Because it didn't remain in him. It didn't abide in him. Whew. We don't want that. We don't want to get to that place. We don't want to get to that point. No. This is why you got to read the word of God. You got to read the word of God. And let me tell you something. I'm repeating it twice because it's once for you and once for me. I'm talking to myself too. When I'm talking to y'all, I'm talking to myself. Listen, when we all minister one minister to each other, we have to be the first partakers of what we're ministering to you we have to we have to get that thing down we have to learn that thing for ourselves because how can we give it to you how can we minister encourage other people if we don't know the word for ourselves if we don't study the word we gotta study it too but what the word say how can they hear without a preacher I ain't calling myself a preacher but i'm just telling you what the word say how can they hear without a preacher you can't that's why so many people walking around here and don't know and don't get it twisted. You got some people that's that's out here in these streets know the word of God just as well as the the ones in church. The devil know the word of God. You can you can have some witches and whatnots, world lots and some more stuff come up in the church and sit right next to you. They know the word too. They listen, but the only thing, the only thing they can't do. They can't worship and praise the Lord. <laughs> you know a demon. We listen. Let me let me get off that. Let me get let me get your mouth off that. Get your mouth off that. Okay. Let me keep it. Let me keep it moving. Whew. Good God Almighty, have mercy, Jesus. Mm. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, that is, if we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart. He said in your heart, not your mouth. He said if, if his message lives here, it got to live here. I love that the word says God can turn the heart of a king. So if he could turn the heart of a king, he could turn the hearts of his children, his sons and daughters as well. 
And that's what I pray for my loved ones. Turn the heart, turn their hearts back to you. Cause them to run back to their first love. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Run back to your first love. Turn and run back to your first love. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, that is, if we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified and honored by this. When you bear much fruit and prove yourselves to be my true disciples. Yes, Lord. See, we can't bear fruit if we don't read the word, if we don't study the word, if we don't praise and we don't worship and we don't have a relationship and we don't fast and pray. The word says this kind goes out by fasting and prayer. You might have something that you really, 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 really stand in need of. You need God to do. You got to go pray and you got to fast. You got you got to turn down your plate. And sometimes you, you, you might don't turn down your plate, but you got to fast from something that you get pleasure from. You got to turn something loose that, that you love doing or, or it gives you pleasure or whatever. You got to turn that thing down. You got to, you got to do away with it and give God your, uh, your undivided attention. You got to pray. You got to fast. You got to seek Him like never before. Mm. My God, have mercy, Jesus. Woo. Glory to God. I felt that right there. That thing I felt. Okay. Mm. Who? And, and, and it says in verse eight, well, let me go back. He said, if, if you do that, if you, if he, if you remain in him and his words remain in you and that his message live in your heart, honestly, earnestly lives in your heart. It's in your heart. You ain't faking it because you know, God knows your mouth can say one thing, but your heart could be far from it. So check your heart. Check your heart. I'm telling you. But if you, if his message lives in your heart, he said, you can ask whatever you want. And it will be done for you. He said, my father is glorified and honored by this. That's why we give all glory and honor to God. When, when, when he does things in our lives, when he blesses us, when he changes us, when he turns us around, when he, when he puts us on that straight and narrow, oh God, when he brings those into your life that can speak life into you, that can impart in you, that can show you what you need to do, that can, that can, you know, rebuke you. Honestly, if you can, you can receive it without no attitude. When he brings those that can correct, come on here. And you can honestly receive that. Whew. Good God Almighty. I'm trying to. Okay. Let me. Let me. Let me move on. Because I'm. I'm trying to get through this. I, I really am. Again. That's why we give him all honor. And all glory. That's why we honor and glory God. Jesus. 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 Just if he wakes me up. I'm happy. God I thank you. I thank you for waking me up, letting me be on the wake up list, wake up call list this, this, in the morning. I thank you. I thank you for waking me up. Close, still in my right mind. Still in my right mind with the use and activity of my limbs. All that I just been through in this year, all that I've been through, I've been, I had COVID, uh, blood clots in my lungs. Uh, it's like my body seemed like it, it, it's not been the same, but I'm still here. COVID thought he had me, but not not COVID survivor, baby. COVID thought he had me, but you lost, boo. You lost that right. That fight it was fixed from the beginning. They ended up in the hospital two more times. They say I had mercy. I say they say, because I, I ain't claiming it. They say I had mercy in my back. And I ended up over in the nursing home for eight weeks getting antibiotics. Sick as I don't know what from these antibiotics and all this other junk they giving me. All this medication they throwing in my system. My system like overload, overload, overload. Too much, too much. I said, listen here. I'm not taking all this at one time no more. I take this antibiotics. Two hours later, I take them pills. But I'm not taking all that no more. Mm -mm, too much. Too much. Making me sick. I, you, when I say I lost a lot of weight, I lost a lot of weight. Even my own children, they sitting there talking amongst themselves like I can't hear them. 
may, may can't see very well, but I hear real good. Can't see good, but I hear real good. And they sitting over here talking to me. She all small. I, I lost weight. I was going through, so I was sick, booze. What you think your mama's going to look like? Yeah, I lost weight. Not a nice way to lose it, but I lost it. But anywho, that's beside the point. But all that I've been through, all that, oh, Lord have mercy, the enemy was trying to take me out of here. He come to steal, kill, and destroy. But God said, not so. Not so. I'm still here, and I'm gonna praise him. People might look at me like I'm crazy. They say she get up and shout every five minutes. Well, if you've been what I've been through, you'll get up and shout every five minutes too. You'll hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory. You'll praise him, cause I've been through some stuff this year. Woo! But the enemy meant for my bad. God worked it out for my good. I'm still in the land of the living. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to holler, God, I thank you. God, I love you to the top of my lungs because I'm still in the land of the living. I got something to praise God for. I owe God a praise. I owe God. When these big eyeballs pop open in the morning, every morning, I owe God a praise. I can't tell nobody else what to do, but I owe God a praise. He been too good to me. He did too much for me. I owe God a praise. He's still doing. Hallelujah. Thank you. Okay, let me get back where I was. Because, honey, I will go off in the... Hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Where, where I was. Where I was. Help me, Lord. Whew. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> okay, I think I found my place. My father is glorified and honored by this. When you bear much fruit and prove yourselves to be my true disciples, I have loved you just as the father has loved me. Remain in my love and do not doubt my love for you. You, he, you How many times do you all think love is mentioned in the word of God, in the Bible? How many times do you think he used the word? Because why? He loves us. He loved his only begotten son so much. Come on here. Glory to God. Come on, y'all. God loves us. He said, I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. It's still Jesus talking, y'all. Who? Mm-mm-mm. Remain in my love and do not doubt my love for you. Don't doubt my love for you. This is what he's telling us. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. Help me get through this. If you keep my commandments. Uh-oh. That's that's where it is right there. Come on here. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Help me, God, on tonight. That's where it is. Did you hear that part? If you keep my commandments and obey my teaching. Mm, mm, mm. Sometimes I, I would sit and say, God, why couldn't I get this years ago? I'm getting older now, Lord. I'm getting up there, Jesus, in age. Why couldn't I get this when I was younger? Uh, answer your own question. Then. I couldn't get it when I was young because I wasn't trying to get it. I wasn't listening. I wanted to do what Edna wanted to do. I wanted to go out and live. I wanted to go out and have a good time and party, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about myself again. That's why I couldn't get it. He said... <sighs> If you keep my commandments and obey, mm, obey my teaching, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. See, he ain't telling us to do something that he didn't do, that he wouldn't do. He giving it to you right there. If you keep my commandments, <laughs> <laughs> and Lord have mercy. We only got 10. So imagine if we had more than 10. Ooh, Jesus. We, we, we really be in trouble. But if you can keep my commandments and obey my teaching, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. So he said, if I can do it, you should be able to do it. That that's what that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm yeah. So I'm gonna keep moving. Um, excuse me. I have told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you. Hmm. 
<laughs> Woo! And that your joy may may be made full and complete and overflowing. So what he's saying is that you know if you if you can keep my if you can keep my commandments and obey my teaching, what I teach you, do what I teach you, do what my word says. Do we're supposed to read the word? We're supposed to study it and apply it to our lives every day on a daily basis. But we don't do that. We like I said in the beginning, I was reading this. Reading the Bible like it was a book, like a regular book, but it was not a regular book. No, it was not. It it held it held all the answers that I need, blessings and promises, and everything in it. Good God Almighty! Okay, all right. And and again, I have told you these things so that that my joy and delight may be in you. So he's telling us all this that we may have joy and delight, his joy and delight, that it be in us. So that our joy could be made full and complete and we'd be overflowing. Come, my goodness gracious. Okay, I'm going to keep it moving. I only got like four more verses, y'all. And then I'm going to, you know, pray and let y'all go. Um, <clears throat> so verse 12, the title says the disciples relation to each other. So title, I mean, title 12, I'm sorry. Verse 12, this is my commandment that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another, just as I have loved you. Do we do that? No, we do not. We do not. Did, did you hear what he said? This is my commandment. That you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another, just as I have loved you. No, we don't do that. No, we don't do that. And that's why I always say, I'd rather serve than be served. You ain't got to serve me. I can serve myself, but I'd rather serve others. And the word is saying that we are to be, we are supposed to put others before ourselves. But, you know, we, we, we have that selfish spirit. That selfishness, that selfish spirit, where we where today it's all about oneself versus helping somebody else. And I've seen it done many times. Somebody could be asking for money or, or you know, have their hand out or have a sign. And folks will say, I ain't giving them no money. Now, my thing is, and I ain't saying I've never done that before because I've done it a couple of times. But my thing is... If I if if they asking, and I give it to them, once it leaves my hand, what they do with it, that's on them. That's their business. But I done my part, and I and I gave something. I gave them something. Whatever I could give, I I gave. But when you give somebody something, it's not your business what they do with it. Once you give it to them, it leaves your hands. It's their business what they do with it. As long as you do your part. So that the blood don't be on your hands, that's that's what you're supposed to do. And we don't do that. Love and self unselfishly seek the best for one another. We don't do that. We don't help each other out no more these days. You remember you used to can go to your neighbor house, your mama said, Go to Sister Susie house or go to Susie house and get that and get that sugar. Get that butter. Get them eggs for me. You, you helping each other out. You remember back in the day, you used to do that. You better not do that today. You don't go and ask nobody for nothing. Everybody got excuse why they can't help you. Why they can't? And it, and it says that in the word. If you have, if you have what that person need, I'm paraphrasing. I never used to use that word before, but I'm paraphrasing. If you have what so and so need right then and there, you are supposed to give it to them. Not say wait till tomorrow. So I can see if I can give it to you. You know that you have it. You're supposed to go ahead and give it to him. Mm, come on here. Okay. I'm going to keep it moving. <sighs> Listen to this one, y'all. No one has greater love nor stronger commitment than to lay down his own life for his friends. I was saying that to my kids recently. I was like, who going who else gonna lay down their life for you? Do you really think somebody gonna give their life up for you? No. 
But Christ gave his life up for us. He gave his life up so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. But we ain't going to do that. You heard what it say. No one has greater love nor stronger commitment than to lay down his own life for his friends. Verse 14 says, you are my friends. If you keep on doing what I command you, I do not call you servants any longer. For the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you my friends. Because I have revealed to you everything that I have heard from my father. He don't tell the servants everything. He don't tell the servants what he tell his friend. He said it. I do not call you servants any longer for the servant does not know what his master is doing. I, but I have called you my friends because I revealed to you everything that I have heard from my father. And that is verse 15. I do not call you servants any longer, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you my friends, because he tells us everything. That's why he said he calls his friends. Servants don't know what the master doing. It's like he said, don't let your right hand know, don't let your left hand know what your right hand doing all the time. Sometimes we got to be quiet about what we doing, what God has us doing, assignments. Cause I know this chick right here can run this thing called the mouth. I I know that. I know I could talk a mile a minute. <laughs> Who? Good God. But put me in front of people, like, really, like, in the same room as a butt boy. <laughs> you know, I'd be like, what? Who? Say what? Talk about what? Oh, God, I ain't feeling too good right now. Beads of sweat on my forehead. He ain't sweating, like, nervous as I don't know what. And I always been like that, but God is bringing me out of that, too. He's bringing me out of that, too. But, um, whoo, glory to God. I'm telling you, let me, let me just read verse 16. You have not up double. I I read I read all that to get down here to this one last verse, y'all. Y'all see me getting excited. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hey, where my scripture go? Oh, there it go. All right, I'm about to read it. Get out of here. I don't want that. I was just looking for some. Okay, there it is. Okay, so I I read all that and and was you know giving you what what God wanted me to give y'all on tonight to get to this verse here, verse sixteen. You have not chosen me. Now now I want y'all to listen to this. Hear that you have not chosen me. This Jesus still talking. Mm -mm -mm. have mercy God but I have chosen you and I have appointed and placed and purposely planted you mm -mm -mm. Yeah. we didn't choose God God chose us and then we have a nerve to be running from what he called us to do <laughs> little feet be jetting boy like <laughs> not me <laughs> I'm sticking around for this Yes, you will. You may you may not do it then. Oh, but he gonna get you. And if you don't do it, he'll just take what he gave you and give it to somebody who's hungry, who's thirsty, who's more willing to do it. So you can play with God if you want to. <laughs> but again, he said, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you. I appointed when, when in, in King James, he said, I anointed you. I know, but this I mean I mean I mean amplify. He said I have appointed and placed and purposely planted you, said so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing, and that your fruit will remain and be lasting, so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, as my representative and Lord Jesus, I spoke this a couple years ago. We got we are, we're God's representatives. We're his representation. We have to be the best representatives that we can be when we repping God. We got to be the best. It's like I used to tell my kids, when y'all leaving out this house to go to school, you representing your mama. 
You representing your mama and your daddy when you leave out this house. So be on your best behavior. Act like you got sense. Act like you got manners. Act like you was taught. Like you have been taught. So the same way you tell your kids, you going out this house, you represent me. Same way we got to represent our father in heaven. <sighs> okay. All right. Let me get back. So that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing. And that your fruit will remain and be lasting. So that whatever you ask of the father in my name, he may give to you. So we we didn't we we didn't choose God. He chose us. So how how do we think that we get that we got that much boldness and nerve to turn our backs and run when He's calling us to do the work when He's calling us to to, to do the work to lift His kingdom up to upbuild His kingdom? But we want to be running like we like we jet like uh uh-uh, not me I'm out of here. You can run run run, but your show can't hide. He'll let you go as far as you think you're going. But when he want to snatch you back, oh, he'll snatch you back. Snatch you right on back. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I love that he said, you have not chose. He let me know off the bat. You ain't chose me. I chose you. I anointed, appointed, and, and, and placed you and purpose, placed and purposely planted you. That's why I, I, when I talk to folks, I say, God, he get, we all have a calling, anointing, and a plan, and a purpose for our life. He has all of that for us. His will, his way, his, and his word for our lives. It's what we got to follow. It's what we got to obey. It's what we have to learn. Took me a mighty long time, but honey, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. You hear me? I'm. I, it's it's time out for me to be playing around with God, for me to be continuing to walk in disobedience and think that He gonna do something for me and He gonna bless me and I'm walking in disobedience. No, He not. Uh, no, He ain't. No. Mm. Don't forget the devil know how to bless too. You better recognize, better recognize that. Trust me when I tell you, you're not a who. I love that it says as my representative. Cause he just it, let me tell you, I I told you I spoke. I I he gave me that a couple years ago. I ain't understanding, and I didn't think I did a good job um, talking about that on on that person's um, prayer line. I didn't think I did a good job, so I kind of didn't. I kind of ended that thing quickly, and somebody kind of came right behind me and gonna do it again. Felt they can pick it up and do it better. See how people do you real quick, and think they ain't done nothing wrong. But hey, that's between them and God. That ain't. I'm good. And and that's what I mean. He just he just let me know that I was I was on the right path. But I didn't think I was on I didn't think I was doing a good job. You know, I didn't think I was repre- representing him at that point. At that time I didn't think I was doing a good job representing him. But he just brought that back a couple years later as my representative. So God, I thank you. I think it took a long time, but you let me know. And, and you probably, I probably read this, but I was reading it in the King James, so I didn't see it this way. As it's putting it in the uh, um, in the um, Amplified, I didn't see it that way. You know, but I thank God on tonight. It's been a couple of years, but God don't work on our time. He work on his own time. It's not in our time, and it's in his timing. We can't rush God. Who Who are we? The thing we could rush God. I need you to do it, and I want you to do it now. Well, I can't remember that commercial. It said, "It's my buddy, and I need it now." <laughs> we can't rush God. We can't tell God, "I need this done, and I need it done right now." I need you to save my children, and I need you to save them right now. God, I need you to do it today. You can't tell God what you need to do today. You say, "God, this is my petition. I bring before you." Lord, I leave it in your hands, and God, I thank you. It's already done. 
that's what the way we have to go to God. That's the way we talk to God, you know. I mean, you talk to God how you talk to God. And I talk to him, you know, my way. But I pray y'all got something out of this tonight. Because I sure enough did. And I sure didn't see it going that way. I'm telling y'all, before I got on here, I was sitting here. And I was like, get up. Do what you got to do. Because I was stuck. I wasn't trying to move. I uh, stuff on, on the couch. And I'm like, Lord knows I got to get up. And go to go to work in the morning, start training tomorrow, you know. God, he opened that door for me to go back to work. Y'all know how many applications I put in since I've been home? A lot, a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot. A lot. I've been in a lot of applications. And this is the only door that was open to me. So I'm going to walk in it. And I'm going to walk it, and I'm going to do my job unto God. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my job unto my boss and and the clients or whoever, however it goes. And when I'm doing that, I'm that's my way serving God. Do unto them, serve others, serve them as I'm serving God. So I'm going to do this job above and beyond my capabilities. I'm going to go above and beyond. And I'm going to do it to the best of my abilities. I'm going to do the best that I can at this job. Because I'm doing it unto God. So. I thank God for the opportunity. I I pray that he brings somebody across my path every day. That I can minister to. That I can encourage. That I can, you know, talk to, listen to. Because a lot of people want to be heard. They want they want to vent. They want to talk. They just want to get it out. And sometimes we gotta be that listening ear. Train my ears to listen, Lord. Clean them out. They need cleaning out too, cause so I can hear. So I can truly hear. But I just thank God for tonight. Thank God for the for that word, cause I really did not see it going that way. I did not know how it was going to go tonight. I didn't know what was going, how I was going to do it. But I thank God for the, for the, for the word. Oh man, I thank God for the word on tonight. Usually, like I said, I already have it on paper and I just didn't, I said, I'm just going to do what you want me to do tonight. I'm just going to give him what you want me to give him and that's that. Oh, give me y'all. I didn't have no nap today. <laughs> um, but I just thank God for y'all being on here. I thank God for y'all listening. Um, I'm going to upload this video to YouTube. The other one that I didn't upload, upload that one too. So I'm learning how to do what I need to do. Um, so, you know. Oh, and I, wanna, um, I can put it on my... Um, my anchor, my anchor podcast, my my flip the script show, is on anchor, but it's it's like on other different um, social media or platforms like all those like Google and all that stuff. I, my platform is it's like all over my um, podcast. So my podcast show is called Flip the Script. So um, yeah, I don't think I could put it on there. And I did not have Wisdom app, but everybody would have to create an uh, account and get on there. This is where you can get on. You can talk and people listening to you live and they can come on as guests or you can invite them on as guests and so forth and so on. But I'm just trying to get the word out, it, um, you know, by all means necessary, get the word out to people because we live in a time that, you know, eventually you're not going to be able to carry a Bible. You you gonna have to be the Bible. That's why you got. That's why he said, "Stay to show that self approved." A uh, workman not being, um, not needing to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So you gonna have to be the Bible, walking, talking by. You gonna be the only Jesus that that people may see. So you got to let your light so shine. You got to let them see the love of Christ in you. You got to be the salt in the earth. Come on, season that earth, honey. Season it. You got to be the salt of the earth. Woo. 
Lord Jesus, I thank you for the word. I, I got to continue getting in it and studying it. I, I even, I got this. I'm reading this book here. And boy, oh boy, this book here, right here. Woo! I, I better read my two last chapters tonight before I go to sleep. I got to read. Oh, it's only one more chapter. No, two more chapters I got to read. Anyway, this book right here. All of y'all might not need this, but I felt like, for me, this is a good read. It's called Keys to Passing Your Spiritual Test. And boy, do it break it down, break it down, break it down. People say I like the color. It's not that I like the color. I like to see where I've been at. And it helps me to know where I've been at. So I highlight. I highlight my Bibles. I highlight whatever. That's how That's how I study. I don't know about everybody else. They say, you like the color. It's not about liking the color. It's that I love highlight because I can see where I've been at. And if I need to go back, it's highlighted. And my eyes go right to where I need, it. I need them to go. They ain't small, but still, I still need them to go right where I need them to go. In my Bible, in the books that I read, you know, I just thank God. I said everything that I put my hands to, that I pick up to learn of you, to read of you, to get to know your ways, everything. Lord, just break it down. Break it down. If, like I'm in first grade, kindergarten, get set, preschool. However you got to break it down so I can get that understanding and insight and wisdom and knowledge. You do so, Lord. You do so. I, I need that. I need you to do that for me. And, and, you know, everybody learns differently. I'm I'm more of a hands-on and, like, visual um, learner. You know what I mean? So, everybody got to have their way of learning, their style of learning. So, I just want y'all to be blessed the rest of this night. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, like I said, inbox, anybody want, need prayer, talk, vent, laugh, cry, together, pray. Um, inbox me, cause I don't have problem with praying with you. I, I matter of fact, I'm I'm getting getting back to where I need to be because for a minute, when I was down, when I was sick, I was I was just like my mouth wouldn't open. Barely, I was doing it in a nursing home. Don't get me wrong. I prayed for my roommate. I prayed for the the um residents in there, even the workers, some of the workers. You know, I had to keep pushing anyway. Even if I didn't feel like, you know, doing it for myself, I still, you know, had to do it for the ones in the nursing home because, man, I ain't going to get on that nursing home because I'll be talking forever because that just was the worst place ever that I've ever had to be in in my life and I feel for those that are there that's that lives there and it's just it's not cool I'm just leave that alone because mm. huh thank you Lord thank you woman of God thank you I appreciate you I, I'll share that um you should ask me to share that prayer now, and I'll share it with you. If you don't see it tonight, you will see it tomorrow sometime. Um, but, yes, thank you for coming on and for listening. Um, I'm just going to pray us out, you know, so I can get get ready, get myself ready for being myself. Um, Heavenly Father, we come before you on tonight. God, I, we just thank you for the word tonight, Father God. We thank you how you moved on tonight, Father God. I pray that somebody, if not everybody, they got something from what you spoke on tonight through your vessel, Father God. I pray that it was needed. I pray that it helps. I pray, Father God, that if they need prayer, if they need to talk, if they just need me to listen, Father, that they will inbox me, Father God. I pray that that you will continue to send your ministering angels to your sons and your daughters, Father God, in their time of need, Father God, in the hour of their need, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that those that don't know you, Father God, will come to know you for themselves, will, will build a relationship with you, Father God, will walk and talk with you, Lord, 
They will learn of you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Father, you know what your children have need of. You know what they stand in the need of, Father. Father, I stand in the gap. I'm interceding, Father God, on their behalf, Lord Jesus. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, bless them, Father God. Bless them, Father God. I pray that you will move on their behalf, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. I pray that peace be still. If they need peace in their mind, in their heart, in their homes, Father God. I pray for their children. I pray that you will continue to cover them. You will cover them with the blood of the Lamb, Father God. You will cover the parents. You will cover the kids' schools this year, Father God. School is about to be back in. I'm asking you to cover the school, the teachers, oh God, the children, Father God. God and everybody else that works in the school system cover them father God because we do not know what this the rest of this year is going to bring I pray that you will cover them father God you keep your hand on them father God at all times in the mighty name of Jesus I pray that you will open the eyes and ears of your people that they may hear and see your truth father God you said in the last days you will pour out your spirit on your sons and daughters father God I pray that you continue to do just that father God I pray pray for a fresh wind over your people on tonight father god those that watch father god those that will catch the replay i i uh, lord jesus i pray for fresh wind father god a fresh anointing lord god in the mighty name of jesus father you know what we have need of in this land you know what's going on all around. I ask you, Father God, to send your war angels, oh God. I ask that you place a hedge of protection, a hedge of safety around your people, Father God. I pray that no um, no hurt, harm, or danger come to your people, Father God. I pray that you will restore, Father God, the virtue back in all of us, that there will be no backlash and no no retaliation come nigh they dwell in, Lord God. I pray that you surround their house, Father God. In the name of Jesus, with your angels, oh God. And everywhere they go and their children go and everybody in the household go, Father God. I pray that the angels will be right there. Father God, I thank you for a supernatural um and, and angelic assistance, Father God. I pray that you will touch your people from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, Father God, like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. And Father, I declare and decree, this is my lifetime prayer, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus and this prayer is still in through and by the blood of Jesus and Jesus mighty name I pray amen and amen and amen y'all have a blessed rest of your evening the rest of your week hallelujah glory to God I thank you all praise be to God hallelujah all glory honor praise and worship is due unto God hallelujah my hallelujah God I think he deserve it he deserve it. He deserve it. My God, he deserve it. He is worthy. Worthy, 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 worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He deserves the highest praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for tuning in and, and, and sticking it out with me to the end. I really appreciate y'all. God bless y'all. I love all y'all to life and beyond eternity kings and queens with that being said good night